Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about 2D and 3D geometry, specifically nets. And nets are the connection between two-dimensional and three-dimensional geometry. We are going to be looking at an example of a rectangular prism. This is a, a rectangular prism. The features of a rectangular are that all of the sides of this three-dimensional object are rectangles, and all of the angles of intersections are 90 degrees. So we've got a 90 degree angle in each of the four corners here, 90 degree angles in each of the four sides there. Anywhere a side meets another side is going to make a 90 degree angle. So when considering a rectangular prism, if you are being asked to find the space contained within that prism, in other words, the volume, you will need to know the dimensions. And typically, the dimensions are going to be described as length, width and height. And in the case of this particular little box, it doesn't actually matter which way I orient it. I just have to choose. So I'm going to choose that the base is sitting like this. So the length, the longest of these two edges that I see is 10.5. centimeters. The width of the base is six centimeters. And the height of the prism is the space between the two larger rectangles. So that's two centimeters in this case. So for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to write those on here. So 10.5 is right here. And that goes from one edge to the other. And then this measure was six. Like that. And the height is two. Like that. So if I was being asked in a problem to find the volume, in other words, the, the space contained inside this box, I would need to use the following formula. I would take length times width times height. So those three measurements. And since all of my measurements were centimeters, that's going to be centimeters cubed. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about what a net is. A net is used in manufacturing to take an object that you intend to build, like a box that is three dimensional, and break it down into a two dimensional shape that could be cut out of some kind of material. So in this case, the material that it's built out of is a kind of thin cardboard, but maybe it would be sheet metal or plastic. 
So in the process of designing this box, someone had to draw a net that would show what the dimensions of each of the sides were and to show how that would be cut out of a larger piece of material that was flat. So I'm going to open this up here. All right, so here's my net. And there's a couple of pieces that I want you to notice. When I open this up, I have two large rectangles, which were the, the top and the bottom of the box. And those are both six by 10.5. And then in between those, I have two other rectangles that are also 10.5 long, but they're only too high. There's another one here. Okay, like that. And then on either end of this net, I have A rectangle again, and this one is six long and too high. And of course, in the process of manufacturing this, the designer would have had to add little flaps, right, where glue would go or where it would get folded in in order to actually build a box. But strictly speaking, the net for the shape is only those rectangles that I've drawn. And it's not, you wouldn't count the area of these little flaps that need to be added on. So if you were being asked to draw the net for a rectangular prism that has the dimensions 10.5, 6, and 2, I would make something like this. Of course, this is not to scale. Now put my little one up here. Like that. And then I would label the dimensions. So twos, sixes, and 10.5. And I could label every single length of 10.5 along here, but I don't have to. I can assume, based on the fact that these are all 90 degree angles all the way along, that that length is consistent all the way along. And that is a net of a rectangular prism. If you were being asked to find what's the area of paper or metal or whatever it happens to be that would be required to build a box with those dimensions, you would need to find the area of each of the rectangles in that shape and add them together. So I suggest one way to tackle that is to think of it as there's pairs of sides. So I've got two little sides that are six by two. And there's two of those. I've got two long skinny sides that are 10 and a half by two. And I've got these two large or wider rectangles that are the top and the bottom of the box and they're 10 and a half by six. So I've got two sets of each of the rectangles that build up that net. So the total area is the sum of all of these numbers. Sum meaning addition. So six times two is 12. 
two twelves is twenty four. Ten point five times two is twenty one. Times two is forty two. Ten point five times six times two is one twenty six. And I add each of those three together. And I get 192. Now, 192 refers to the surface of the cardboard. So it is two dimensions only. So I'm going to write centimeters squared. Okay. 